Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Welcome to my final episode on quadratics. Today, we're gonna to look at hidden quadratics. So let's get right into it. So what are hidden quadratics? When solving functions, some functions are in a particular form that can be rewritten into the form of the standard quadratics that we're used to. Let's look at some side by side. So if we were to solve x squared minus 5x plus 4 is 0, that's a very standard basic question. So we'd factorize, we would have x and x, we would definitely use 4 and 1. And then to make minus 5, we'd need both of them to be negative. Now we have two brackets multiplying together to give you 0. So either x minus 4 equals 0, which makes x equal 4, or x minus 1 equals 0, which means x equals 1. But let's look at this other example. Solve x to the power of 4 minus 5x squared plus 4 is 0. They look very, very similar. They look similar in terms of their coefficients, 1, minus 5, and 4. But the variables have changed. But actually, the form of the overall equation is actually not so different to what we just did. Because if you look at the middle variable, the x squared, if you square that, meaning if you do x squared times x squared, you get x to the power of 4. Yeah, so if you square this, you get that term. And it's the same in a quadratic. The middle term, when you square it, in terms of the variables, you get the first term, the leading power. So what do we need to do to this equation to rewrite it in a form that we're mostly used to? Well, what we could do is we could let the variable that we're squaring equal a different letter. Now, a lot of people like to use y. I don't like to use y just because y is used in other contexts, y equals f of x, y equals you know, the actual equation. So I don't like to use y, I like to use something different. So I use u for substitutions. So you let u equal x squared. Now remember what we said, this middle term here, if we square it, we get x to the power of four meaning u squared would be x to the power 4. So we can rewrite this expression, or this equation, in terms of u. x to the power 4 is u squared minus 5u, then plus 4 equals 0. Now we already know the solutions to this, we just did it, right? But remember, we weren't solving for u, were we? We do know that the substitution we made was u equals x squared. So we're going to replace u with x squared now being 4 and x squared being 1. And now we can square root and we get x is plus or minus 2 and x is plus or minus 1 to give us our solution to this quartic. Next example, it's a hidden quadratic because look at the middle term, root x. If we square that, we get x. Yeah, we know root x times root x is x. So what we'd do is we'd let u equal root x, then u squared would equal x. So we can rewrite this as, and now we can factorize. Here, we'd use 3 and 2. Now we have to use 3 and 2 because we need both of them to be minus. So 6 and 1 could make minus 5, but each of them would have to be different signs, which would make a multiplication of plus 6. So when we solve this, we're going to get u equals 3 and u equals 2. But don't forget that we let u equal root x. So we get root x equals 3 and root x equals 2. And then we square both sides. So squaring both sides, we would get x equals 9 and x equals 4. Next one. Now this one's an interesting question. 5, 4th root of x plus 3, square root of x minus 2 is 0. The question is, what are we squaring to get to the other variable? Now, if you take root x, if you square that, do you get 4th root of x? Well, the answer is no, we just did that, right? Root x squared is x. So that's the wrong way around. How about if we look at it the other way? fourth root of x, if we square that, do we get root x? 
Well, we can use our index rules to check that. So if we take fourth root of x, which is x to the power of a quarter, if we square that, do we get root x? Well, when we square that, we multiply the powers a quarter times two is power half. Well, power half is root x. So it's the fourth root of x which you're squaring to get root x, which means we're going to let u in this case be the fourth root of x. So then u squared is root x in this case. So when we rewrite it in that order, we would get 5u plus 3u squared minus 2 is 0. Then we can rewrite it in the order we're used to, 3u squared plus 5u minus 2 is 0. And then we're going to try and factorize. So it has to be 3u and u. It has to be 2 and 1. Now we have to make sure we put the 2 and the 1 in the right places. I'm going to put 2 here and 1 here and see what happens. 3u times 2 gives you 6u. 1 times u gives you u. How is that ever going to make plus 5u? Is if we do plus 6u minus u. So this is going to have to be plus and this is going to have to be minus. So we're going to say here 3u minus 1 equals 0, which gives you u equal 1 third. And the other one, u plus 2 equals 0, so u is minus 2. Now, we have to replace u with the fourth root of x. So we get the fourth root of x is 1 third, and the fourth root of x is minus 2. Now, the standard answer here is to do power 4 both sides. Now, for the first one, you definitely have to do that. Yeah, we have to do power 4 of both sides. If you do 1 third to the power of 4, 3 to the power of 4 is 1 over 81. So that's one solution. But 4th root of x equals minus 2. Most students, what they do is they do power 4 both sides. Yeah, and they'll say x is 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. But you would actually lose marks if you do that. This is kind of like a trick question. You can't actually do this. The fourth root x function can never be negative. If you were to go onto a program that plots graphs, the fourth root x graph looks something like this. Yeah? It is always positive and it can never equal a negative number. So for this example, it can only be 1 over 81. Yeah, minus 2 is down here. Yeah, where do you see an x value that gives you uh, an intersection with the fourth root x graph? Now, this would have been the case as well if it was the root x graph. Root x cannot be a negative number. So be very mindful of that. For cube roots, it's okay. Next one, given that t equals x power of a third, express x power of two thirds in terms of t. Now we can explicitly see that if t equals x to the power of a third, then if we square that, yeah, if you square that, you multiply the powers, so that would be x to the power of two thirds. Hence solve this equation. So we've done the substitutions now, they want us to use t. So we have x to the power of two thirds and x to the power of a third. So if we square this, we get this term. So we're going to have 2t squared plus t minus 6 is 0. Factorizing. So for 6, we have options. We have 1, 6, 2, and 3. I think it's going to be 2 and 3. Uh, we'll try it. Now, just as a trick, the 2 can never go in the first bracket because you have two even numbers. It has to go here. 3 would have to go here. 2t times 2 gives you 4t, and here we have 3t. How does that ever make plus t? Is if you have plus 4 minus 3t, then 2t, to make a plus 4t, this needs to be plus, and this needs to be minus. Now, that gives us a solution of t equals 3 over 2, and t equals minus 2. Then finally, we're going to go back and make our substitution for what t is. So we have x to the power of 1 third is 3 over 2 and x to the power of one third is minus two. Now remember, power one third means cube root, so we can cube both sides. Now when we cube this fraction, we cube the top and the bottom. 
So 3 cubed is 27, 2 cubed is 8. Now remember, odd powers are allowed. Yeah, so we can cube both sides and we get x equals minus 8 to be our solution for this one. Okay, last question. Given that y equals x to the power of 1 fifth, show that the equation x to the power of minus 1 fifth minus x to the power of a fifth equals 3 over 2 can be written as 2y squared plus 3y minus 2 is 0. Now, these are interesting questions because it's not explicitly shown that it's in the form of a quadratic. But what we do is we do our standard solving to rewrite all negative powers back as fractions. So x to the power of minus 1 fifth is 1 over x to the power of 1 fifth minus x to the power of 1 fifth equals 3 over 2. And now we can make that substitution of y equals 1 fifth. We'd get 1 over y minus y is 3 over 2. Then all we do is get rid of denominators. We're going to times everything by both denominators 2 and y, 2 and y, 2 and y. Here the y's would cancel, would be left with 2 times 1, just 2, minus y times 2y is 2y squared. And here the 2's cancel, we're left with 3y. Then move everything over here. Hence solve for x. So we can factorize this quadratic. We're going to have 2y and y. Now it has to be 2 and 1. Remember the trick, the 2 can't go in the first bracket because there'll be two evens, it has to go in the second bracket. Now we just double check, 2y times 2 gives you 4y, this gives you y. How is that going to make plus 3y is if you have plus 4y minus y? So this has to be plus 2 and a minus, so we get y equals 1 over 2 and y equals minus 2. But don't forget we're solving for x, so we're going to have x to the power of 1 fifth equals a half, and x to the power of 1 fifth equals minus 2. Now remember here, because the power here, the denominator, is an odd number, that's okay. If it was an even number, this solution would not be valid because it can't be a negative because of the way we drew that graph. But odd powers is okay. So we're going to do power 5 on both sides because that means fifth root. Now 2 to the power of 5 is 1 over then 32. And then the last solution, when we raise that to the power of 5, we get minus 32 to give us both of our solutions. Okay guys, I hope this was really helpful. This has been my series on quadratics. If you learned something, please hit the like button. And if you want more maths content, then please hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in my next maths video. Peace.